I don't have this discussion of relationships all laid out, systematized and so forth. There are all kinds of images that come in and out like stars, little stars, so you're going to have to paste these images together in order to make some sense out of them. But what is important is to look at our understanding of intimacy as primarily a practice ordered by spirit or authorized by spirit and executed by someone who recognizes that she cannot by herself make happen what she has been invited toward. Chapter 1. Dano. Home to the Old Ways. The Dagara people are mainly associated with the West African coastal countries of Ghana, Ivory Coast, and Togo. Inland from these countries, at their northern border, is Burkina Faso, formerly referred to as Upper Volta. In 1984, the government of Upper Volta decided that its colonial name was too troublesome, so they cho chose a new name, which means the Land of the Proud Ancestors. When in 1882, a European council sitting in Belgium tried to figure out how to share this big land of Africa, they ended up dividing the Dagara tribe into three different nations. There are a few th hundred thousand Dagara people in Burkina Faso, another few hundred thousand in Ghana, and a smaller number in the Ivory Coast. This division of people occurred as a result of the arbitrary nature of colonial powers who didn't accept tribal communities as nations. Socially or communally, we are not that different from indigenous communities elsewhere. Maybe what should be mentioned is that we don't have the amenities that one has here in the West, such as electricity or running water. We don't live in houses without cockroaches. We're very close to the earth and to nature, and that is the gift that we receive from such a place. In the village where life is directly inspired by the earth, by the trees, by the hills and rivers, the kind of relationship that exists between man and nature is directly translated in subtle ways into the building of the community and into the building of the relationships that exist between people. When asked where they are from, the Dagara people who live in Burkina Faso usually say the village of Dano. This is because even though there are many villages in the tribe, Dano is the biggest. But it's nothing like a town by modern standards. It's just a village surrounded by other villages. It's difficult to know how many people live here since in Africa, we don't count people. People know one another from village to vi village, having family and friends in many of these small communities. This comes about through marriage and immigration and through active neighborhood relationships. And down on the streets have no names. There is one main street which comes off the road that connects down on to the main highway. And Ouagadougou, the capital city. It's probably around 300 kilometers to Ouagadougou. If you have your own car, you could probably make the drive in three and a half hours. The road out to the main highway is not paved, and it has lots of big holes and animals and people crossing, so it can take you a long time. Buses travel this road. They stop every 10 miles or so to check in with somebody or to drop somebody off so it's not steady travel. The thing is, no one seems to be in a hurry. So by bus, it can take you a minimum of six hours to a whole day to reach the capital. That is, if you don't have any kind of mechanical breakdown. The land is what you would call a savanna, mostly hilly grassland with few trees taller than 30 feet. The tallest tree is the boabab, which grows really high, about 180 feet. Although it's not no longer forest-like, in certain places we do have dense groves of trees, such as the shea, which is known for its healing power. The shea tree gives this green, delicious fruit. We eat the fruit and use the nut to make butter. The butter is used by the Dagara people for medicinal purposes, for cooking, and for cosmetics. After you've lived, as I have, 
in places like Michigan or even North California. The weather in Dano no longer seems so cold. But I remember when I lived there, it used to be really cold. I used to think when it dropped into the 70s, it was cold. Now that I've lived in a climate where the temperature may drop to 30 degrees or even lower, 70 seems pretty hot. Even though Burkina Faso has three relatively large rivers in the area of Dano, there are only seasonal creeks and ponds. These are our sources of drinking water, and we dig wells during the dry season, which starts in November and lasts until mid-June, sometimes July. Then we have to rely only on wells for water to drink. In the driest seasons, you will find the whole village gathered around one well of water, sometimes spending the whole night waiting for the well to fill up. This is because at these times of year, the water comes at certain hours only. Very early in the morning, for example, the water table will be high. Then at noon, it will be at its lowest point. We will have to go at night in order to be there when the water returns. Families with children are served first, together with pregnant women and the elderly. Then everybody else is served last. So even if you have been waiting during the night, if a family with children arrives, they will be served before you. You would call our economy agricultural, perhaps subsistence farming. We produce the food we need to live. We have not done any exporting, even though in recent years the government has been trying to get us to do so. That, to us, is a foreign concept that we have yet to learn to deal with because we grow exactly what we need and no more. Our main way of trading is to barter, although in the village we also use cowrie shells for money as well as for divination and healing. These little white shells were brought by the Dagara people from Ghana a long time ago when the tribe used to live closer to the sea. Cowrie shells are used sort of like gold has been used here. All the French-speaking countries in West Africa, Burkina Faso, the Ivory Coast, Senegal, and so forth, also use a regular kind of money called CFA. To get that money, of course, you have to sell things, and if you don't have something to sell, then you basically live without it. You have to stay with the old ways of bartering. The two systems of trade exist side by side. We grow many things. For example... There are three different kinds of millet. One of them is called sorghum in the West. We have red and white sorghum. And we have another kind of millet, which is called Z in Dagara. We have red beans, black-eyed peas, peanuts, and we have big African yams. Not the regular yams like you have here, but yams up to three feet long, weighing 20, 30 pounds. And then we have sweet potatoes two different kinds. We raise animals also, chickens, guinea hens, pigs, goats, and lambs. They are raised not only for food, but also for trade. For example, if I have a goat and I need millet, we might negotiate a fair amount of grain for me to receive in return for my goat. We hunt wild animals, but now we mainly see hunting in a context of ritual such as initiation. It's not like in the old days when the whole tribe would take one or two months and go hunting and then come back home with meat to live on for the year. This has changed only in the past 10 years or so because of political restrictions. Basically, the government is trying to claim the land. Until the 1980s, the land had always been the land of the people. Still, people did not consider it their own. They saw it as a spirit as something that they were just borrowing. Now that the government is regulating the land, you have to pay taxes on it. 